Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to be looking at putting this thing back together, which is the transformer from that phase converter. Now, uh, this has taken quite a lot longer than expected because of uh, lockdown and all that bother where you couldn't actually buy any materials or even leave the house half the time, but nevertheless, uh, we're going to put this back together today. And it's coming to these two halves of these cases, which uh, obviously see painted red there. Both uh, obviously the same there, and uh, transform we'll just have a look at in a moment. And originally had a piece of plywood in the bottom, but as I think I mentioned in a previous episode, we're going to replace that with uh, some other material. Mainly because that plywood is fairly horrible and it's not actually thick enough anyway, relevant to where the holes are in the back of the case. So this is what we have then, the transformer itself here. This uh, just has these uh, screws that go through case and hold it into position there. These will come in some kind of varnish material and as it is so that's absolutely fine. Now on this side there were a couple of pieces here which looked like the end of some winding or something which had this sort of fibre insulation over. I've left the fibre in place just put a bit of heat shrink over each there just to secure those in position because they were literally just slipped over. Probably not the uh, best there but put that back together. These are the three wires which originally went through the top of the case, basically through one of the holes here. And that's the original connections on there, just mark those appropriately so you can find out what they are. And the case itself here, the inside is just a red primer finish, I haven't uh, done that with a top coat because obviously not really much point. So we're actually going to put two of these pieces in the bottom. These just sit under the transformer just to uh, support it. And then the screws there just go through the holes in the back. These are basically the correct thickness for the things to line up with that correctly. Previously had a thin piece of plywood which was slightly thinner than these two and uh, that actually meant the transformer sort of in the holes but it was sort of sitting down a bit on the side there and not quite uh, as aligned as it should be. And then these are the side straps which basically just go up here to secure the two halves of the case together. Both halves of course being identical. Now before this goes into the case uh, all we need to do is to extend these wires because these are too short. They do just about reach through the top of here where previously there was that horrible plastic box there but we're not going to be having a connection box on this we're just going to have a fixing here for the cables to come out and go directly into the other cabinet and then we'll just blank off the other hole in the other case piece there. So we're going to actually extend these in length somewhat and then uh, they'll just say come straight through into the other unit. Now for wiring we're going to use this, which is white, and got a big roll of it here, just going to use everything as white and just identify the ends appropriately. Saves buying obviously loads of rolls of different colours because uh, basically we don't need this for anything else at the moment. Now this is what's called tri-rated. Now there seems to be this mystery about what tri-rated stuff is, it's some kind of magical wire, but it really isn't. So all it means is it's just been manufactured in such a way that it meets three different approval standards and therefore you can use it in various different countries. Most importantly you can use this for stuff in North America because it meets the standards there and of course you can use it in the UK and Europe as well. So tri-rated just means exactly that, it has three different approval ratings. What those actually are doesn't particularly matter, which obviously depends on which country you're in. This uh, particular one is say white here, it's 2.5mm uh, squared and it's solid copper, it's a decent make, it's actually Doncaster cables, although it doesn't say so on the actual drum here, it is impressed into the actual uh, coating of the wire there. And you can see it's got these various marks on here, equipment, wire and cable and whatever. Now this is going to be fine for most of the equipment here because this thing, so we don't really know what the total rating is, but uh, so this is good for sort of uh, 25 amps or something like that, which is perfectly fine. Now you can see here it's actually slightly thinner than the existing wire we have here. Now I don't know exactly what the size is, it's probably some imperial size or possibly some American size as this has all the evidence as of coming from North America. But uh, what we're going to do, rather than buying a whole roll of this in 4mm, which is probably about the size that that was, so basically it's going to be two of these, basically something like that, spliced onto the end of those. And we're actually going to uh, solder these connections and cover them with heat shrink, so they're going to be permanent. Those will be located inside the casing, we don't intend to be opening this again. And we'll also need to put, of course, an earth connection as well to this, so we're going to make that to the metal casing itself. And then, so this is basically the primary power input for the whole thing. So it's 230 volts in and 400 out, or as we saw previously, it's more like 245 in and uh, 430 or something coming out of it with no load. So 
just going to uh, cut these off, attach two of these of a certain length, and then we can just get it in the cabinet and uh, get it sorted. Now just strip the wires there, see the black one on the top is the one from the transformer and the other two are the uh, smaller size copper ones we've got. So it's not a huge difference in size, I so say this black one is probably not some metric thing at all, but two of those is certainly uh, over the size of that single black, so that will be absolutely fine. And then we're just going to splice these together, something like that. So it'll just be the single black here and then the two white coming off for the rest of the equipment. Now in terms of connecting these together, these are fairly fine stranded as so are these, so I'm just going to spread the original and the new and then we're just going to sort of mesh them together like that and then we're going to do the same with the new one over the top and then if we crimp that down just with finger pressure there and a bit of a twist what we end up with is a fairly well connected conductor there so basically all the individual strands are in contact with each other and we're just going to solder over the top of this and then we'll cover the whole thing with heat shrink. So that's now all soldered together, so just two there on that side and one on the other and we've filled the entire joint with solder. So all those fine strands are obviously in contact with each other and they've all got solder basically on all sides and uh, all the way around. So that's why that's cool and then we'll cover it with heat shrink. Now for soldering using this thing, you can't use a little soldering iron because of course it's too puny. This I think is 100 watts, so 100 VA anyway, so it needs a decent amount of power to obviously get the heat into the joint there. So that's absolutely fine. And uh, nice uh, unsleeved pins there, which just shows you uh, how old this thing actually is. Now to cover this one, I'm just going to put some uh, tape over the joint to start with mainly so it covers over any uh, sharp bits there I and mean, it's pretty smooth but uh, obviously some irregularity there so we'll just wrap that over with this uh, PVC tape here just so it basically covers over the uh, joint there without any uh, possibility of sharp bits poking through so I'll just remove that and then just cover it over we're going to use some heat shrink and we've got some here this it's just black and we're going to go a decent distance to either side. So we'll just cut the appropriate length there so that will cover well past uh, both sides of that uh, particular section. And we'll just throw it onto the end here. I've already marked the ends of the label so we know what is obviously what. Otherwise these are all just three identical wires. And I know we could test it to find out later. That's obviously uh, kind of a bit silly when we can just work it out in the first place. So we'll just slide that uh, over the top there, get that fairly uh, centralised, so you just feel where that is in the middle. And then we'll just shrink this down with the hot air and uh, that will be done. And we'll do the other two, of course, exactly the same. This are the, uh, the one and three terminals, which is basically one is the 240 input and the other one is the uh, 415 or so output. So I've just uh, put all that back together there and uh, just use some of this black flexible conduit here just to put into the top of that. And uh, the other thing I've thought on the bottom is some rubber mounts to hopefully reduce any vibration. Obviously this being a transformer it's fairly old it uh, will have a certain amount of noise as we saw in the original video when it was powered on. And I've also got a set of those for the motor as well. So again that uh, hopefully should uh, minimise any noise that we have there. And on the top there I've just got two uh, holes there filled in with those metal conduit plates. Uh, just drilled a hole in one and fitted the plastic conduit inside. And then as you can see there the actual flexible mounts on the bottom do provide that bit of movement so any sort of vibration hopefully will be minimised and not transferred through to the plate it's going to be mounted on and obviously that will act as some kind of amplifier and make noise a hundred times worse. So uh, the transformers all fixed up there ready to go back with the other parts. So until next time Thanks for watching.